<laughs> What's going on guys? Um, it's been a minute since I recorded a video. To be honest, I've been going through it, you know, trying to just, you know, this is a, it's a journey, but it's not a race or it's not a sprint. It's definitely a marathon. Um, and I didn't want to be on, on the camera trying to tell people things about God and me myself not fully in alignment and following what I practicing what I pe preach so just with that out the way you know there there's things that I have to repent for and things that I have to stop doing and I continue to grow and build my relationship with Christ I'm not coming on this to claim that I'm perfect and I have everything figured out because I'm far from that um I like I don't have it all figured out I don't I'm I'm learning and I'm growing every day um but as you can see from the title I'm gonna talk about the time that you know God gave me a dream and I was in hell and some people might say it was just a dream but it it was too too vivid and and it stuck with me. I had this dream in middle school. It was about seven years ago. Um, and I'm just honestly, I'm just gonna jump straight into the to this because I don't, I really don't even like talking about this because it's just really put fear in me, honestly. Um, so I am in middle school. Yeah, uh, let me actually preface, let me preface, sorry. Um, growing up as a child, I always had, I was just different, like I could, I could see things that other people maybe not, didn't see, like, well, I'll just keep it a buck, like I could see demons and like different things in us, in the spiritual world. Um, and no, it was not nothing I asked for, I didn't ask to see you know, demons, like, uh, for example, just to give you a quick example, this will be a short story. Um, when I was younger, like, I want to say like first grade, every night I'd go to bed, and there would just be demons. Uh, sorry. I really don't. I really don't like talking about this. Um, there would just be demons watching me, circling my bed. They never touched me. They never did anything to me, but they would just stare at me and watch me. And it would just be like, almost, they looked almost human, but they were just black. Like, face had no features. It was just all black. And they would almost be looking like they're in, like, business attire, but just an all black figure. And there would be multiple of them all surrounding my bed, just watching me. And I would sleep, like, literally with the blanket over my face every night. And I didn't tell anyone. I, I was just scared. Um, you know, and I, at the time, I did not know it was demons. I didn't know what it was. But obviously, through growing up and further revelation, you learn. But anyways, um, we'll get to the dream. <laughs> so, in my dream, uh, basically, I was in, like, this almost like a tower but it was very big like like a like huge like uh it was like a gothic looking place like um if you know um sorry my dog is distracting if you know just like the like old vampire movies and stuff like where the stones carved but it's really dark color schemes and like red um but basically, I was just in this tower, and I'm, like, bound, like, um, in, like, the medieval times, like, those things where, like, your head would be wrapped. I'll probably put a picture in it, but, like, your head would be locked in, and then your hands are also locked in like this, and you're just kind of, like, the rest of your limbs are free, but you're kind of chained like that. Um, and I was bound like that, and everyone in this, in this, um, this tower was pretty much bound, um, and so, at the, at the time, I did not know I was dreaming. I didn't know nothing. I, I'm just in this thing, and it's like, uh, you can feel the fear. Like, I don't know.
know how to describe it to you, but it was like the fear was literally, it was more than just an emotion at this point. Like it was like a presence that was over everyone, everyone there. Like people, all, there were so many people like, bro, like <sighs> y'all, I don't think people like understand the gravity of like how many people are going to go to hell and I'm not saying this to put myself above any of you like I'm saying this because I actually care about people like you live your entire life you know worried about what job you're gonna have in the future all these different things but you don't ever worry about death you know no one likes to talk about death but we're all gonna die and that's something that's promised. It's not you. I could I could die in, in this next minute. You could die while you're watching this video. Like the gravity of that, you you should really understand and really pay attention because so many people are going to hell. So many people don't take my word for it. Seek the truth. If you do anything from this video, seek the truth for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it, but you should t be seeking the truth. Because if you find the truth, you'll come to the same realization as me. Um, but anyways, let me let me get back to it. So I'm 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 bound in this tower, and like I can look above me and I can look below me, but I'm like chained and we're like all circular. And there's just rows of people behind me, rows of people in front of me, and it just goes all around in a circle. And and ev everybody knows what's going down. Like like it's not even a question. Like everyone knows we're about to go to hell. Like, and as I said, uh, it's like gothic looking, but everyone there, um, like the, the, the fear was just, it was like alive. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It was like a lot, like you could just, it was a presence that was over the whole place was fear. Like, and it's a deep, you couldn't get this fear on earth. I, I don't care if someone, like, I, it, you can't have this feeling. Because it was a fear that you know you're going to eternal damnation. Alright, and and the people's faces had, dis like, it was a hopelessness that, like, I don't know how to explain it. They were just hopeless, like, like, it's not... It's more than someone that lost everything. Like, like I'm talking about like, just your, the eyes were, were, it was like black here, like and, and dark around gloomy, just around this area. And like the mouth was like drooping, like everyone had this like frown and it was just, <sighs> it was, it was just terrifying to be honest with you. Like, um, and I just see all these people I'm talking about. Millions upon millions of people. Different, different black, white, Asian, you know, islander, like it, all races, all people, men, women, all just bound. We're all bound like this, waiting. You're, you're literally, it was just waiting. Like waiting to go to hell, and then, um, so as I'm just looking around, my I can feel something just unlocks my my like I don't know what their things are called, but I'm gonna put a picture. But like the thing that has me bound, like something just unlocks it, and and as soon as it um, unlocks, I just I hear a voice. Um, and, and the, the voice just tells me that you, it's not too late. Uh, you still have time. And then um, my, my the, the thing that was holding me, it, it's released and, and I can walk around. <laughs> and, and as I'm walking around, you know, I see, I see people that I know, I see family members, friends, I, I see a lot of people and they're all, we were all bound in the same, in this same thing. And 
you know, I start walking around and then eventually like I just I just wake up. And that's really like you know, I didn't I didn't go to hell specifically like the lake of fire. Um, I believe I was just in a waiting place before everyone was cast into the lake of fire. But this I had this dream again like in middle school. <laughs> And the, all, all, the only reason I'm doing this is because the Lord put it put it on me to, to record this video. It's about, I want to say, 7 a.m. right now. I, I was woken up at 4 a.m. And from that time till now, I could not sleep. All I could do was think about this dream. And this, mm -hmm. mind you, this dream, I don't... This ain't something I like to think about every day. This is not... This thing, I'm I'm surprised, you know, thank, thank the Lord he's able to keep me in a state where I can articulate my thoughts to you right now. But this, when I talk about this, this makes me cry, like ball my eyes out. Um, because it's, it's, it was that scary, like, and, and, and just the, the amount of people that, going to hell like it it hurts me and it's not it's not there's no one to blame but themselves if I don't go to heaven no one can be blamed but me it's because I didn't follow and I didn't listen that's why I'm making this video right now you know and and, and I woke up and I didn't know why I woke up so early um, and I just prayed and I read and um, I read but I'm just gonna give you what what God showed me this is Proverbs 30 and I'm gonna read verse verses 11 to 15 it says there is a d generation that curseth their father and do not bless their mother there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet not washed away from their filthiness there is a generation oh how high Oh, how lofty their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. And if y'all, I'll just break this down real quick. The first verse 11 is talking about children disobeying being disobedient to their parents and and not you know obeying the instructions that are given to them the second verse 12 um that, that's it's a form of self-righteousness right it says that there is a generation that is pure in their own eyes meaning i'm blameless according to myself i've done no wrong i'm okay according to myself Right. And then there's a generation that is lofty and their their eyes are lofty and their eyelids are lifted up. Um, so they they're seeking things. You know, they're always looking for something, something special, uh, but they're not looking for God. And then the one like voice 13 that uh, their teeth are as swords and their draw teeth as knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among men, you know. That really stuck to me. Um, I live in Seattle, and in downtown Seattle, there's, there's like, a lot of homelessness and, and um, you know, people that are addicted to different uh, drugs. But anyways, you know, when, when you, you walk through these areas, you can tend to just look at these people as if they're not human, and I'm guilty of it. The same, I'm not saying this to, again, be self-righteous. I'm guilty of this, you know, but in, in our generation of social media and, and trying to put on a front that everything is perfect and glamorous in our lives, we can look at a homeless person and just think that they're scum. Or they're they're not nothing. They're not human when they're the same as us. They may not have made the same decisions, but there's a reason they're there. And a lot of the times that homeless person could probably be more loving, more kind, more selfless than any one of us that, that live in a house and are privileged and 
able to have food every day. You know, and our generation is so consumed in ourselves. We only care about glorifying ourselves for the people that are around us. And y'all really need to, to humble. Humble yourself in your mind and, and humble how you look at yourself because there's nothing you do on your own. I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to say it. Nothing you do ever is of, of your own will, uh, is of yourself. Any gift you have, any bad thing, it's, it's all from God. God broke me down to my core. And I could sit here and be angry, saying, why'd you take this away from me? Why'd you do this to me? But I'm not. I'm grateful and I praise him. Why? Because through that breaking me down and taking everything from me, putting me through probably the worst pain that I've gone through so far in life, and there's probably much more to come, but he did that because I was so proud. And I was so proud that I wouldn't acknowledge him, even though he gave me dreams about him. You know, he allowed me to see demons. I had... I've had so many, maybe I'll make other videos, I've had so many spiritual experiences throughout my life and I rejected God every time. But why? The key reason why was because I was too proud. I was too in love with myself, wanting to please myself. And, and now I'm, I'm in the process right now of, of making my, my actions please the Father. Not, not please myself, why? Because all those people I saw in that tower, all them people, they're going to hell. And there ain't nothing that's going to stop it. Like, once once this is game over, it's game over, bro. Like, there's no comeback. If, if you want to play games and run around just saying, oh, I don't believe there's a God, so I'm not going to worry about it. Dog, you better do your due, due diligence. Don't, don't run around playing because once you're dead, I'm telling you, once you're dead... All y'all gonna be wondering why I didn't do this. Forget wondering why. Even if you, you doubt and you're against it, do some due diligence. Read, don't take my word for it. Read for yourself. Seek a knowledge, seek knowledge for yourself. And I'm not talking like don't half butt it, like fully dive into it. Death is promised to every every man and woman on this earth. You could die at any given time. Don't put stuff off till tomorrow. Y'all need to get on that now. And really, like, that's 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 the video, man. Um, you know, again, really, really, y'all, like, a lot of people are going to hell. And again, I'm not saying this to, to make myself seem holier than you or better than anyone. Because, matter of fact, hold on, we're going to go one more, one more verse. It's Ecclesia. Ecclesiates, nah, I can't, I hate pronouncing this book, bro, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know how to pronounce it, but look, we gonna read, it's, this is chapter 7, and we gonna do verse 20, right, check this out, check this out, for there is not a just man upon the earth that, that doeth good and sinneth not, what does that mean, there's not one man or woman on this planet that doesn't sin, that's perfect, so I'm not talking to you from a place. Don't think that I'm trying to talk to you from a place that I'm perfect and I'm better because I'm not. No, Christians, anybody, don't put yourself better than anyone else because you're not. We're all the same. We all sin. But I'm redeemed through Jesus. That's the difference. I'm redeemed. So I'm trying to teach y'all how to be redeemed so you can you cannot be in fear of death, be in fear of what's going to come next. Because you're redeemed through Jesus. It's not about me being thinking I'm better than anyone. Or if you're a Christian, you're better than the world. No, you're not. You should be the least. Because the least on earth would be the greatest in heaven. That's your goal. Your goal should be to be the least. Not to look better than anyone. You should be the least. But, yeah, man. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I praise God. You know, praise God. But, uh. Look, y'all, just, again, don't take my word for it. Seek for yourself. I'm, I'm probably going to put them pictures in there, but I ain't going to edit this video. I'm not. This is going to be a real one. Like, this, it's just me speaking because God put this on my heart right now. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't plan on making no video. I didn't plan on 
doing nothing, bro. But, you know, if, if I'm trying to lead with an example, he put it on my heart to record it, so I'm recording it today. Literally, as I, I told y'all, like, he, he put on my heart to do this, so I'm going to do it. And, you know, just uh, seek him first. You know, seek the kingdom of God. Uh, I love y'all. Again, if you need anything, prayer uh, and stuff, you can reach me on my social medias. I might not uh, be on there for a little while. I'm taking a break off of that. I need to clear myself of my mind and focus on reality. But yeah, I love y'all. God bless. Have a good one.